bags. Take them down. Not about you. This is about soldiers A to Z. Take them down. Right, you all know why we're here and what we're here for, but them that don't know, we are here for one agenda and one reason only, and that is to stop the prosecution of soldiers A to Z. Yes. As you can see, the numbers aren't massive, but they're good. It's Armed Forces Weekend, but the numbers are going to grow over the week and more will have come apparent in these speeches. So then, we have a number of different speakers for you today, but what this basically is, what you're seeing here now, three years ago when we were doing this, we had 20, 30 people. We have united and we have come together of all the veteran groups. In total, there's 101 different groups. There's 4.8 million veterans in the UK. 4.2 million of them reside in the UK. We need to come together. Yeah. One voice. So the first person I'm going to bring up is not a man of many words unless he records it. <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, he's a shy man. <laughs> yeah? Somebody give him the name, the Mad Viking. I give him that name because I watched one of his videos and I thought, he's crackers. But he has got some testicles on him and he's willing to stand up and speak for every single last one of you that's here today and that isn't here today. So I present to you Dean Cumberpatch, the Mad Viking. Go on, Dean. Go on, Sam. Go on, Dean. Go on, Dean. I don't know me. Um, I am a veteran and I'm suffering from a, a degenerative terminal illness and I can't go to my grave knowing that these people are hanging our veterans out to dry yeah, and yeah. chucking them under the fucking buses. And, uh, right, so first of all, I wouldn't be here without my wife. She is my backbone. And the same as every other veteran here. Our wives are our backbones. Right? And thanks to all the women for turning up today. Uh, like, I'm not much of a speaker. But, uh... Right, so this is the start of something that's going to get big now. Because we need direct action against them in there. Yes. And I, for one, am personally prepared to put my life on the line to yeah. stop the prosecution of our veterans. Yeah. Right, so I'll keep it on sweet and I'll let people that can proper talk have their say. But from the bottom of my heart, my heart thank you very, very much for everybody that's turned up that supports, that likes us, that does whatever you've got to do. Thank you, guys. Go on, keep it going for Dean Cumberpatch. I'll be saying bits and pieces in between the speakers on statistics and figures. There's some high profile people in this crowd. Yeah, Phil Campino, one of them, Big Phil. So it'll be streaming to everyone. 
So then they haven't got their phones out, get them out, live stream it to your veteran groups, share it to your friends and family, and push and stand together. Hey, no surrender! So, what's happening since? The BBC will not give us air coverage. Shame on them! Shame on them! Shame on them! Shame on them! We went to the BBC. We did eight cities. We did Belfast, Glasgow, Manchester, Durham, Birmingham, Bristol, Cardiff, and London. On the day, there were nearly 300,000 veterans out. This week here, we have good numbers, but there are thousands on the way to join us. The numbers will keep growing because, like Dean said, and the other organisers, we are here for a week. Hold the line! So why are we here? How many of you out there know how many veterans are being investigated and have had letters at the minute? How many? Too many. Too many. Two hundred and seventeen. That's the point. Answer. Too many. Because over two hundred veterans have been given notification that they are to be investigated. <laughs> There is 29 cases ongoing at the minute. And for the police officers that are here, that are veterans, once they've done for us, they're coming for you. Yeah. Yeah. They've already come for one of you. So instead of being against us, stand with us. Yeah. Stand with us. Yeah. Yeah. And on that point, I'm going to accommodate and say thanks to the police because they have made this possible. You don't even allow the speaker system here, but they got it sorted out for us. So I feel pretty, they're on side. Everybody says that they're all rogue veterans out there. Yeah? I am a veteran before you all go mad and I say, yeah, they may be. But they should be dealt with there and then. Yeah? That's what inquiries are for. But they were took the, king, the Queen's shilling and were there doing a job for them. Yeah. Put them on trial. They gave the orders. They should be on trial. Have you all heard of the Savile Inquiry? Yeah. A lot of veterans that have been investigated and acquitted and never signed up. Just go and help you with the Get yeah. back up. Yeah. A lot of veterans that have been investigated were acquitted, so they never signed up to the Savile Inquiry. Now they're being prosecuted. Dennis Hutchins is one of them. Dennis Hutchins has been acquitted four times. Once is bad enough, but four is taking the mick. He is a fighter. He has now been told that he will have to suffer a dip court. Yeah? So he will go to Belfast, he will fight, and he will have his day in court. We need to show that man and give him 100%. Yes. Yes. Mike's gone. Hello. Soldier F. Soldier F will also have his day in court. In London, there. So he's not hiding either. But they should not have to be there. So the first speaker that we're going to bring up today is Simon Bean. MBE, the Maverick veteran. And he's more than likely one 
to be dragged up on an investigation before long when they finish with Northern Ireland and they come for Afghan. Simon Bean, the Maverick veteran. Hi guys, Maverick veteran here. I'd just like to say a big hello to Billy Galloway, who fought in Korea alongside Michael Kay. Hello, Billy. Today is zero hour, and our mission is to occupy central London for as long as it takes until our leaderless government stops the persecution and prosecution of our Northern Ireland veterans. The ministers, they sent us, the ministers have sold us a more spineless group of individuals you never did see. You can say that again. When the chips were down, the RUC, PSNI and the Northern Ireland office rely on British service personnel to stand, fight and protect yeah. Yeah. and the innocent public. When the war came to an end, and moved to the mainland. Successive governments relied on us to infiltrate, identify and bring down those responsible. Failure wasn't an option and every one of us dug deep to perform our duties to the very best of our abilities and within the rules of engagement and come home in time for tea and a general service medal. For many, it was our first medal. And for many, it was to be their last, perhaps awarded posthumously to a parent or a loved one. When a soldier dies in service, the media sometimes reports, and the people grieve. A government spokesperson sheds a crocodile tear and makes a standard statement from a default template and explain that those responsible will be brought to swift justice. But seldom, does that happen? When the boots on the other foot and the soldier takes down a perceived threat in accordance with the yellow card, those same ministers roll over like a pack of university educated Labradors with tongues extended to appease the very terrorist organisation and political wing that we were protecting them from. Yes. Our government is not fit for purpose. Yes. It has no honour and no tone. They rely on service personnel to carry out their dirty work whilst they exist in a utopia where their hands remain clean and then call us terrorists! We have news for them because they sent us and their hands are just as grubby as the trigger man's. Yes. Albeit a little less honest. So ministers, whilst you're prosecuting our veterans for alleged crimes in a trial 
without jury, take a look at yourself in the mirror and you'll see a real criminal staring back at you. Yes. You thought these prosecutions would go unnoticed and would be assigned a small footnote in Anglo-Irish history. But you were wrong. You have entered into the veteran arena and we are tap and you are tampering with that that we hold dear. The British veteran community is going to make your political lives hell on earth. Yes! Just as you have made lives of soldiers A to Z, hell on earth. You'll probably take me down, and that's fine with me. Because as I fall, another veteran will rise up behind me and so it will continue. Because we do not fail. No surrender. We call this the Spartacus effect. Yes. yes. I am Spartacus. I am Spartacus. I am Spartacus. Ministers, do yourselves a favour. Stop this witch hunt. For today is our D-Day and we will, if necessary, bring this country to its knees. Yeah! Yeah! And as your employers will issue you P-45s. Yeah! You're not suitable for the positions you hold. Absolutely. You come for one of us. You come for us all. Yes! Ladies and gentlemen, fellow veterans. Brilliant as always, mate. Simon Beach, MBE, the Maverick veteran. Now as I look round the people that are here today, a lot of you will have been in conflicts, operational theatres, and there are a lot of maroon berries out there yeah, that are more than likely have served their time in the province. I know what it's like in the province, I've been three years in the province, I went out for the armor bomb, we picked dead women and children up, I was a young lad, and it's a horrible, it's a different form of warfare, it's CQB against your own people, you don't know where the threat's coming from. So imagine what it was like on Bloody Sunday. <laughs> When them young paratroopers went to a human rights rally How do we get rid of these Hello, to maintain the peace How do we get rid of and then they're open fire on by three automatic weapons from a block of yeah, no, sorry, mate.
The man's a warlord. He's a warlord. He's a criminal. In the army, they say shit rolls downhill. Well, let me tell you, it's going to start rolling uphill. Yeah. Our next speaker works a lot with veterans with PTSD um, and runs an organisation called Mind at War, which helps veterans, elderly veterans, young veterans and everything else that are suffering because of the troubles. Because them people over there just push you to the wayside. So I'd like to introduce Norman McGuinness from Minds at War. Oh, no. Hello! I did have something written down on the iPad, but unfortunately, I'm going to do it tongue in cheek. Those bastards yeah. and press yeah. don't give a shit about you, me, or anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. If we look at the amount of suicides that we've currently got this year, we're now standing on 38. Last year, last year, we had 85. You may recall from last October when we had the PTSD demonstrations in London. Those facts and figures have not changed. From the Northern Ireland veterans community, currently, Minds at War are looking at 96 veterans who are currently on our books. We have over 300,000 veterans groups out there, and we now only have 101 who are united and standing together. It's time social media becomes stronger and we get more and more and more of them groups to come stand shoulder to shoulder. Dennis Hutchins, a man who is practically on his deathbed should not and will not go to court on his own. Yes, yes. You, as veterans, should be standing outside of the courthouse in Belfast and stand with Dennis. Yes. yes. Like the other speakers have said, you come for one, you come for all. This is a message for the Suicide Minister. You are killing our troops. You are not putting money into the pot where it should be. Yes. We have six big charities sitting on millions and millions of pounds. Yet, we have six organisations who are fighting tooth and nail without any funding. All call signs, Minds at War, Veterans Against Terrorism, <laughs> Veterans for Veterans, leave no man behind. Yes. If we can do it, so can this fucking government. Yes. Yeah, yeah go on, tell him no. The tantrum of the Exchequer you brought this fucking country down. You're still doing it. Theresa May, she's on her way out. Who have we got next? I don't give a shit who we've got next. But what I will tell you guys, you are the only people who can stand shoulder to shoulder and bring the necessary for our prosecution and our persecution. This fight is your fight, so stand together and let's do it! Yes. 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 Yes.
Isn't it funny how every Prime Minister passes the book? Yeah. They send us and then they sail us. So they send us to do their dirty work to protect this great nation and then they sail us down the river. The current contest at the minute, I'll mention a couple of people. Johnny Mercer, yeah, he's now changed his tune and he's backing us. The reason why we don't have political speakers up here is we are no longer going cap in hand to any politician. Yes! yes. You prove yourself to us. You fight for the people that fought for you. Yes. The next one, Jeremy Hunt. Oh. Close. Jeremy Hunt. Northern Ireland veterans are basically the same as terrorists. You wanker. Yes. Then you backtrack and try to get the veteran community on side so you can sit and get paid all their millions. How do you expect to send the British forces to war when you can't back them, you spineless jellyfish? <laughs> right, so the HRU the Historical Investigations Unit. They already did Iraq, right? Did you all hear about the 2003 Iraq inquiry? Yep. yep. They succeeded with that. I know because the lad I served with was done for war crimes. So they're all sat there waiting in the wings to be done as well. This has to stop. Yes. Now. 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 On the 20th of May, it was debating in the House of Commons. How many of you saw it? How many saw the debate in the House of Commons on the persecution of veterans? Yeah. Not that many. In the House of Commons, they all agreed that we shouldn't be being persecuted. So why are we? Why? Because they're two-faced. Our next speaker, and he's going to keep it brief, his full 22 years military service, and then went on to the Metropolitan Police. He's gone dead. He then went on to serve with the Metropolitan Police. I'm just going to introduce him as Mike. Everyone. I never expected that I'd be here today, here today supporting our brothers and sisters who served in the province. But one thing I'm really proud of today is seeing each and every one of you come out to do the same thing and support one another. Irrelevant of what's regiment, where you came from the Navy, the RAF, the Army, we all are as one. Yes. I've got to say a big thank you because I know that I've met a few of them this morning and also I am a football fan, supporter, to the, some of the lads from the DFLA who are here. Yeah. I thank them for coming to support our cause. We need, to, we need to stand firm on this one because we have been let down time and time again. I've spoken to colleagues who I've served with, as, um, as Dan has just told you, I've just I've not long retired from the Metropolitan Police. Prior to that, after coming out of the army, I was a prison officer. But there are guys who are serving in the prison. There are blokes and guys and girls who I know in the police who are worried also 
are they going to get letters to say they're going to be investigated because we were ordered to go to the province. We can no longer take this and we've got to stay firm, we've got to stand firm and one thing we should never ever do is never ever surrender. Yeah. Cause going. Never ever ever fall away. Let's support everyone who has been persecuted by this government. Let's support each and everyone who are going to be persecuted by this bad government. And let's stay firm and stand together. Let's with the football association or with the DFLA, we forget our alliances to our various clubs and let's support each other. Here I know military guys and girls. We stick as one. Never, ever, ever surrender. Cheers for that, mate. Well done, mate. Just to finish off then. Yeah, I'm not going to keep this too long. I'm just going to let you know what's going to happen. When we finish the speeches here, that is not it. You can't pitch a tent in London, it's a £5,000 fan. We've got horsemen pitched in Green Park. Yeah. Yeah. The numbers are going to grow. It's Armed Forces weekend, but the numbers are going to grow. And just the while that show is shit off over there, we'll see you Monday morning. Yes! And then if somebody don't come out and give us answers, we'll see you Tuesday morning. Yes! yes. Then Wednesday morning. You cannot deal with us, you cannot stop it, but we will stop the nation. We will hit big business, which will affect them. You need to come up with a solution sooner rather than later, and it needs to be fat. Down to 20% no. Even on that.
Peter Help, after five years, we've got the petition approved, which is going to demand that they debate, debate in Parliament having random drugs testing for MPs. Yes. 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 That means that it's not uniform here. Their job will be easier because those people won't be taking drugs. Because as their boss said, people in the middle classes taking class A have got blood on their hands. These guys deal with it every day. Young kids are getting stabbed on the street. If we can sign that petition, get them to debate it, we've at least we're starting to break the stranglehold of these monsters. Now, all you have to do is look on the internet. It's called Drugs Testing for MPs. It's, a, it's an official petition. Sign it, share it. We've already got 1,020 hours. We need 10,000 by Christmas and they'll debate it. It's a small victory, but it's a victory. I am so honored to be amongst you all today. And I cannot tell you how grateful I am and every other civilian. Okay, I was in the civil science branch of the MOD, but I know what you guys go through. The fact is this, you run towards the danger, you shield us from the filth of terrorism. And what's happening to your brothers in Operation Banner, where 1,700 uniformed personnel were murdered by the IRA, you deserve the support of the people of this country because they are not giving it any support to you. Thank you. Oh, good job, that's a civic. Yeah. We know that the civilian population backs its own forces. It's a shame the shower of shit doesn't. Right, before we go, we've had a veteran collapse. He's come here on his own. We stand together as one. Just a couple of volunteers to go with him over to the hospital. So he's not on his own while he has an MOT. Would be much appreciated if you can make your way to the front and the remainder of you listen no matter how long you've done whether you've done your 22 yeah, whether you've done 35 right whether you've done 4 years you signed that oath of allegiance for Queen and Country yeah. you stood there and fought shoulder to shoulder with your mucker next to you Stand there again, shoulder to shoulder, with that mucker next to you, and let's make this work. 